Although the internal rate of return is a very valuable tool in terms of evaluating whether or not to take on a project, in some cases, for example, when you have a delayed investment, it actually can have where the IRR will break down and fail, and you're better off using net present value to make your decision. So just a quick review, the IRR decision rule is that we're only going to accept a project if the internal rate of return is greater than the cost of capital. And by cost of capital, I'm talking about the opportunity cost of capital, what you could have done with that money. So we think about this, only is the IRR guaranteed to work? And by guarantee, I mean in every situation could you count on it, if all of the negative cash flows are going to come before the positive cash flows. Right? So you've got a situation here where you've got a project, and then you've got these different time periods, and here you've got a negative 10, and then positive 3, positive 5, positive 8, where the, these are all cash flows. Right? So you have in a situation like that, you've got the negative cash flow coming first, and then all the positive cash flows. When that happens, then you can trust IRR always. However, if that is not the case, for example, a delayed investment, IRR might break down. So let's say that you started your own construction company and you received $10 million up front to do your very first project. Right? So you've got the $10 million in the bank, but you still have to go and build this building or whatever your project is, and that's going to cost you $4 million a year for the next four years in order to complete that project. So if we were going to think about mapping out your cash flows, let me just change colors here. So if we're going to map out your cash flows, it would look like this. So you're going to have a positive $10 million right here, and then you're going to have a negative four million and I'll just here we'll call this time zero time one and then year two here year three and year four and I know that that isn't very symmetrical there so we'll have negative four negative four negative four right so these are cash flows so you're receiving ten million dollars up front we're gonna call that year zero right that's just the beginning and then at the end of year one you pay out four million in terms of costs on this project and so forth at the end of year two, at the end of year three, at the end of year four. That's that's how the cash flows are going to look for this project. So we're going to call that a delayed investment because you're actually investing the cash later, right? Up front, you're getting the money, and then you're investing the cash. So let's take a look at, at what the IRR would be. So I actually used Microsoft Excel, and I just used the, the following formula, equals, and then rate. And then I have here uh, the four for the four periods. And then they have here the negative 40 or uh, excuse me negative 4 million, and then I have here the 10 million you receive up front, and then the zero at the end. So you don't have to use this. You could use the, yeah, the IRR function equals IRR. You could solve it by hand. We've got other videos on that. Right now, let's just focus on what the IRR is, and it's 21.86 percent. If you use that formula, that's what you get. So that that's the the IRR and now let's think about this so our cost of capital is 12 percent so normally if we go back to to our IRR decision rule we're gonna accept if the IRR is greater than that opportunity cost of capital so is the IRR greater than 12 percent is 21.86 percent greater than 12 percent of course it is so According to the IRR decision rule, we should accept this project. However, if we were to calculate out the net present value, we would actually see that the net present value, which would be, here's, here's the math if you, if you want to calculate it out by hand, otherwise you can just take it on faith, that it's negative 2,149,397. All right, I've just calculated it for you to save time. So the net present value is actually negative. Right, so this you see that negative sign. This is negative. So what does that mean? That means that you reject this project. And and we've talked about it in another video. And I'll I'll just remind you here that if there's ever a debate between the net present value or or a difference between the the net present value and the IRR, there's some kind of conflict. Go with the net present value. The net present value decision rule will always give you the optimal decision whether or not to do the project or not. So it's clear here. You're going to reject this. So then you might think, hey, what is going on here? 
right? So the IRR is 21.86%, and yet you know, you know that's higher than the cost of capital. So why why is the IRR higher in this case? Why why is it telling me to accept when the MPV is saying to reject? Well, the way that cash flows are set up, it's almost like you're borrowing money. If you look at it, you're getting 10 million in the beginning, and then you're having you're paying out these negative cash flows over the life of the project. Isn't that like if as if you were to borrow money, right? You borrow the 10 million and then you pay it back over time. Now, I know that's not what's happening here, but it's structured the same way. So basically this rate, it's almost like an interest rate. It's almost like this is the rate you're paying, right? So this is this is almost like the rate you're paying instead of what you're earning. I know that's not the case in reality, but that's the way it's it's kind of set up. And so in that case, then you would only accept the project if the IRR, if this number here, was actually less than your cost of capital. So just in this kind of weird situation where you have this delayed investment, in this particular situation, it would actually be reversed, right? And so since this is higher than the cost of capital, this is like the rate you're paying on the investment is higher than your cost of capital, then you wouldn't want to do it. So in any event, it's just best to just, if that's too confusing for you, just take solace in the fact that MPV is negative in this situation. And we've got the, the classic case where we don't have, remember we said IRR is only guaranteed to work if all the negative cash flows come first. And what do we have here? Well, we have a positive cash flow right off the bat, and then we have the negative cash flows. But still, it, it, it is useful to know the IRR even in this situation because then you can kind of look at the kind of sensitivity analysis and say, like, for example, you would have had to have underestimated your cost of capital here by 9.86%, just take 21.86% minus 12%. So this means you would have had to underestimate this by 9.86% uh, before the MPV would actually become positive, right? So so it can give you a little idea of what sensitivity, right? So even if you the cost of capital is actually 14% or something like that, you still should be rejecting the project. So it is useful with sensitivity analysis, but bear in mind, the MPV is what's going to tell you here correctly that you need to reject this project.